You see tour guides walking around on campus. Now the Office of Admissions is facing potential legal problems with planned unpaid training. These days it seems you're seeing more dirt than grass on the campus. How Elon is changing, coming up. If you've gone to an Elon sporting event, then you've seen and heard them find out what it takes to be part of the bands. All this and more coming up on Elon Local News. Good evening and welcome to the first Elon Local News broadcast of the year. I'm Rajad Agarwal. And I'm Sky Cowens. We start tonight with news that the Office of Admissions is breaking state and federal law. Ashley McGetrick has been following this story and has more. Ashley. Sky, tour guides in the Office of Admissions have long hours of training like many other on-campus jobs. But this year, tour guides aren't being paid for 16 hours of training. And that is against North Carolina and federal law. It is arguably one of the most coveted and definitely the most competitive student job on campus. I've sometimes said that it's harder to become a guide than it is to get into Elon. <laughs> With an acceptance rate of less than 10 percent, becoming a tour guide on campus isn't easy. It also isn't easy to stay one with an annual required training. This year, guides are required to attend 16 hours of training sessions during the last weekend of August. Vice President of Admissions, Greg Zeiser. So it's a pretty comprehensive two-day experience and it's, it's required for students unless they're studying abroad because training is so important. Even if you've been a guide for you know, several semesters, you have to make sure that you attend um, and, and are apprised of, of what's going on. The catch? The training session is unpaid. An email sent to all tour guides regarding the training session explicitly says, quote, you will not be paid for training this year since it is 16 hours and over two days. This is a change from previous semesters when the training lasted about six hours. According to both North Carolina and federal labor laws, this is illegal. In order for a training session to be unpaid, it must meet all four of these requirements. It occurs outside regular working hours, attendance is voluntary, the meetings are not directly related to the employee's job, and the employee is not doing anything productive during the training. Judging by what you're telling us, we own that training situation only meets one, maybe two of the criteria. Mm -hmm. So how is that possible? That's a good question and one that I'd have to look at. I was not aware um, of that, but you know, typically speaking, something that is brought to my attention I would explore with um, the coordinators for the event. The email also tells tour guides, quote, it is mandatory to work and if you cannot work training, you will not be working this fall. The federal labor law considers trainings to be involuntary, quote, if the employee is given to understand or led to believe that his present working conditions or the continuance of his employment would be adversely affected by non-attendance. Zeiser so said the training will definitely for, not you know, be canceled, but he will look further sure into the situation. Attend, um, and, and are apprised of, of what's going on. Right, and it shows. They definitely are informed. I see enough of them coming out of the... the situation is to pay the tour guides for their time. If that happens, then the issue will be forgotten. But if the tour guides continue with unpaid training, legal action could be taken against the university. I'm Ashim Getrick, Sky Mjot, back to you. Thanks, Ashley. Whether you're at Elon for your first year or your final semester, there are some changes on campus. How actually Bowie examined them up close. First, Daniel Commons got an upgrade. Now, Danily residents don't have an excuse to skip breakfast because Einstein Brothers Bagels open today. But that's not the only new addition. There's a classroom, a student lounge, and we can't forget the new patio overlooking Lake Verona. The changes go beyond Danily neighborhood. The Truett Center is beginning a weekly 20-minute still program on Wednesday. From 12.10 to 12.30, this program inspires everyone to be in tune with themselves by sitting in silence. Physical changes aren't the only difference. Elon Greek Life changed its name to Elon Fraternity and Sorority Life. More organizations are rebranding and academics are expanding as well. Now students who have declared a double major will get an advisor in each major, making it easier for scheduling. Ending our journey on the opposite side of campus, Arts West has added two recording studios, a music technology classroom, and much more. 
For more changes, check out elonlocalnews.com. With just one day until classes start, residents of the Danley neighborhood will have an easier time getting up this fall with the addition of Einstein's Bros Bagels to the Danley Commons. The bagel shop, which will serve everything from lunch sandwiches to classic bagels, will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. during the week and 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. on weekends. All nutritional information regarding Einstein's bagels is available at elondining.com. Getting 1,600 new students settled in has different challenges every year. But the newest obstacles were the ones surrounding the oldest dorms on campus. Our Michelle Alfini took a look at how the most recent construction affected move-in day. Good morning. Welcome to Elon. This was the scene across campus Friday as thousands of students moved in for the first time. But this site called for a big change of plans in one area. The parking lot and the construction and everything has been kind of problematic this year, but we are making it work. By the time the class of 2019 walks onto the Oaks, this dirt pile will be the new school of communications. But for now, it's altering their move-in plans. Construction on the expanded school of communications meant parking and unloading along Lebanon Avenue was out of the question for students moving into West Virginia and Sloan dorms. So orientation directed those students and their parents to Arts West. I am giving them tags. <laughs> um, West for is pink, Virginia yellow, and Sloan blue. And I'm just welcoming them to Elon and telling them um, where to wait until it's ready. Families pull up to the lot, wait with other students from their dorm, and then get called down five by five to make the drive to Haggard, where they unload their things and move on to permanent parking by McMichael. It sounds complicated, but according to orientation staff and the new students, things went smoothly. It's working like a well-oiled machine. Everyone, there hasn't been a backup or a line or anything at all. To make the waiting easier, orientation also had faculty and students along the road to answer any questions about Elon or just meet the new students. Met a lot of friendly people coming up and down the way. That was pretty interesting. Um, saw some sights and heard some different things, so I had a blast. I enjoyed it all the way up here. Looking out her window on the first floor of Sloan, Sydney Hager can watch the new building grow while she starts her Elon experience as well. Michelle Alfini, Elon Local News. Now construction on the new School of Communications is expected to be finished in 2017. That means Hager and other members of the class of 2019 will have a chance to take part in classes in the school they saw going up the day they moved in. Construction on Elon Shar Hall, which will hold the expanded school of communications, began ahead of schedule. According to the university architect Brad Moore, the multi-million dollar building will be ready for the first day of classes next August. Gabriela Rosales is making great progress after her visit to the university earlier this month. Students, faculty, and staff welcome Rosales with a lunch at El Centro. In March, Rosales was hit by a car near the Oaks and was airlifted to UNC Hospital. She has been slowly recovering since then. Rosales is planning to relocate to Miami in the fall to continue her treatment, eventually relocating to Nicaragua, and hopefully coming back to Elon soon after that. Changes to student health care could impact your enrollment status. According to the Office of Student Health and Wellness, those previously enrolled in collegiate risk management will need to find insurance from another source. The organization is no longer offering a student insurance policy. Health insurance is a requirement for full-time degree-seeking domestic undergraduate students, degree-seeking domestic graduate students, international students with F or J visas, and part-time undergraduate students. Tomorrow is the first day of class here at Elon, but some students had the first day jitters today. Next, how one family is taking the phrase, long live Elon, one step further. Classes start tomorrow here at Elon, but school started today for thousands of students in the Alamance Burlington school system, and I was there to capture the excitement. School buses rolling back into the parking lot and students walking back into school. These were just some of the sights seen around Alamance County on Monday morning as another school year started back up. It's like holiday time for us. We've got lots of hugs, lots of just, hey, Mr. Davern, how are you? And parents, they're just thrilled about the coming year. Jack Davern is the principal at Elon Elementary School and says they are implementing new initiatives this year. 
At Elon, we are um, globalizing our school, which each grade, grade level has a geographic location in the world that they will be emphasizing. Um, so as you see, even in our um, halls, all of our displays have a, a multicultural theme. And even though he's excited, for some, a new school year doesn't come without some nerves. It has been a rather interesting morning because <laughs> she is very, very nervous, but I know she'll do fine. Talissa Jacobs' daughter is starting kindergarten at Elon Elementary School. Summer has come to an end, and today is the start of my daughter's first day of kindergarten, and she's actually starting on her birthday. And on the western side of Alamance County, Principal Todd Stevens says they've made some changes to prepare for today and the rest of the school year. We've added some positions this year. We have class sizes that we feel are pretty manageable, um, so we're happy. We think that the smaller class sizes in a lot of areas is going to help. Steven says he hopes the new positions will make for a smooth school year for both students and teachers. Moving to college can be a difficult adjustment, but our Megan Ford found someone who brought home to campus. According to new student orientation, 1,600 new students now walk the bricks of Elon. Kyle Bachoco is among them. I feel pretty excited, a little bit nervous, but you know, it's going well so far. Luckily for Bachoco, moving in has been smooth. I have no complaints. Um, yeah, and I got my family here to help me, which is really nice. Bachoco's parents will be leaving Elon soon, but his sister isn't going far. In fact, she already goes here, and Kyle Bachoco doesn't mind one bit. I always have someone that I can kind of go to. I can always go to her apartment and just kind of, if I ever like need to relax, you know, I kind of have somewhere to escape to. Kyle Bachoco joins the class of 2019, walking the same bricks as a sister, but taking a different path. Alexis knew what her major was. She's very, you know, and Kyle kind of is up in the air, thinking about a couple of things, but um, he's, it'll be different. How different? I don't know. But despite their differences pointed out by their mom, both Pachocos are excited to have each other. When she did go off to college, I feel like we actually got closer, even though we spent less time together. Because I mean, when she went off to college, you kind of realize, wow, you know, like, <laughs> it's a, you know, she's really important in my life. He's my best friend. Alexis Pachoco says it's the little things like driving together and sharing meals that will make the difference for her college experience. Megan Ford, Elon, Local News. It's also great for the parents, same vacation time and only one school to travel to. Whether it's an 8 a.m. or a 2.20 p.m., we've all been stuck running to class, probably more than once. Our Gary Grumbach has mapped out the quickest way for you to get around campus. Everyone has a different theory. To cut through the Performing Arts Center or take the bend around Mosley. There's a science to the campus commute, and me and my pedometer have mapped it all out for you brick by brick. Let's start in Global the most generally convenient area to live on campus. But the academic pavilions are still a bit of a hike. Your best bet is to cut through Mosley at the lakeside entrance, exit Mosley near Young Commons towards the library, take the little staircase right at the east of the library, walk past the Alumni Center, use the crosswalk on Haggard, and you'll be the first one to class. How about if you're over at the Oaks and in serious need of a quesadilla? The quickest route to Cordoba is to cut through the Performing Arts Center, take the path that runs directly in back of Mosley and behind the admissions building, then cut across colonnades. You might have to pay extra for guac, but you won't be walking any extra steps. And finally, the swankiest of Elon housing, but also a little bit of a trek, Mill Point. Going from Mill Point to Mosley, head down Williamson and cross near the bookstore. Take the path that bends around Virginia, cross Haggard near the gym, and take the path on Young Commons to Mosley. Whether you're running to class or Cordoba, now you can get there a little bit faster. Gary Grumbach, Elon Local News. And coming up, our Meredith Stets spoke to one Elon senior making a pretty penny thanks to his family's minivan and a popular app. Welcome back and thanks for watching Elon Local News. It was a beautiful weekend as new students moved in and we have our Brianna McClelland in downtown Elon with your Phoenix 5 day forecast. Bri, how's it looking? For the first day of class tomorrow, chances are some students are planning out their first day of school outfits. So are you going to need a jacket or umbrella? Your Phoenix 5 day forecast coming up right after the break. 
I've got to say, I've missed the beautiful North Carolina sunshine, but I did not miss this humidity, especially while moving in. Today's temperatures reached 88 degrees, but it felt a lot hotter with the 72% humidity. But for the rest of the week, it's not going to go away. For the first day of classes tomorrow, we're going to see partly cloudy skies with highs in the mid 80s and lows around 60 degrees at night. These temperatures are going to linger for the rest of the week. Wednesday's temperature is reaching a high of 86 and lows around 62. Thursday looks to be mostly sunny and temperatures during the day are around 85 degrees and not dropping below 60 in the evening either. Looking to the weekend, Friday is going to be partly cloudy with temperatures remaining in the mid 80s and lows in the 60s. But the sun will indeed come out tomorrow. With Saturday's temperatures lingering in the mid to high 80s with lows in the 60s and no clouds in the skies. Now, even though fall semester is starting, seems like this summer weather is going to stay around for a while, and I, for one, am not complaining. Rajat and Sky, back to you. Thank you, Brianna. With the start of the new school year, many students will be on the hunt for a part-time job. Howard Mathis Studs found one senior who's using his passion for people and cars to make some extra cash. You need a ride after a night of fun. Senior Noah Sagan believes he can help. With Uber, that is if you want to basically, if you want to pay for the luxury of not having to wait, um, you know, having somebody come just right away whenever you hit that button. There's usually Ubers in the Elon area, so they'll be there within two minutes. According to its website, Uber is in more than 300 cities and more than 60 countries. Sagan says that since starting in July, he is making a respectable salary while driving for the larger Piedmont Triad area. I have done well. Some weeks I make $400. Some weeks I make $100, depending on how much I work that week. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been pretty good. Let's take a closer look at exactly how Uber works. First, download the free Uber app to your smartphone, or you can use a computer. Simply save your credit card information, your phone number, and a basic profile. With Uber, the process is completely digital. You simply save your credit card number to your profile, and the fee goes directly to your bill. Next, select your exact pickup location, followed by an optional destination, and then hit the Request button. And now, you wait for your driver to pick you up at that exact location. Once picked up, Noah says he can promise a signature Noah Sagan experience. I've had passengers, like, they hear a song come on the radio that they like. I am more than happy to turn it up and, like, dance and sing with them. I asked Noah to take me along to show me a typical Uber ride. People have told me that my signature is the minivan, and when they see the minivan, they don't expect me to be driving it. Sagan is also on the executive board for Elon Safe Rides, an organization that provides free rides for students on the weekends. Now that he is also driving for Uber, he says he is continuing his passion for keeping people safe. Just because I'm Ubering, that will not stop me from, if there's an emergency, I will be there. While Sagan says he's had his share of interesting experiences, overall he says it's been positive. There's a lot of people who will tip you like when they're going out, like, you know, if they were loud or something, and it doesn't bother me, but if they think that they were, you know, in any way sort of disturbing or anything, they'll, they'll throw you a couple bucks, and they're really nice and really appreciative. Sagan expects his Uber salary to decrease when classes start, but knows that whenever he's in need of cash, all he has to do is sign in and wait for those coveted pickup requests. Meredith Stutz, Elon, Local News. Sagan told us that Uber is in the works of making a specific market targeting in the Elon area. In the meantime, for more information on how Uber works and for the passenger and for the driver, check out elonlocalnews.com. Hypnotist Tom DeLuca returns again to close the freshman orientation weekend. DeLuca's show will begin tonight at 8.30 p.m. at Rhodes Stadium and is open to all students. DeLuca has been coming to Elon for more than 10 years. In the show, he chooses students from the audience to participate in hypnotism. The show is a student favorite and many return each year to experience the magic firsthand. These students suit up for the field, but they're marching to a different beat. That story coming up. Welcome back to Elon Local News. I'm Justin Beagle. Rich Skrowski's first season back with the Elon football team was far from stellar. A 1-11 record, zero conference wins, and an injury-plagued lineup. But it's a new year, and Skrowski and the team have a new mindset heading into 2015. Saturday, the Phoenix held its penultimate scrimmage from Rhodes Stadium. Beforehand, fans were encouraged to attend the Phoenix Fan Zone. 
Phoenix Faithful were able to enjoy free giveaways, face painting, a bouncy house, and much, much more. Fans then turned their attention to the action on the field. Coach Grosky still has not announced a starting quarterback, and he does not plan on announcing one anytime soon. More on that in a second. Frontrunners Connor Christensen and Daniel Thompson showed flashes of a starting quarterback throughout the day. Christensen completed 21 of 30 passes for 152 yards. Thompson went 13 for 20 for 115 yards, so pretty similar numbers. Both struggled, though, during the two-minute drills, each thrown an interception. Skrosky was not too pleased and says the competition is still even. I don't have a date on it. I've said that for a year now. <laughs> And basically, you know, I'm not going to rush into a, a, a wrong decision. If you asked me a few days ago, I probably would have said one guy. But if you asked me more recently, maybe I'm saying the other guy. So they really, you know, it's, it's the drama continues. Elon will wrap up fall camp today and go into regular season practice on Wednesday. The Phoenix first game will be next Thursday night at 7 p.m. against Wake Forest. Now, while many Elon students were returning to campus from their summer vacation this week, the Elon men's basketball team was coming back from a trip to Europe. The 12-day trip included stops in Germany, Austria, and Italy, where the Phoenix played in five scrimmages against professional teams, finishing with a record of 4-1. In their free time, the players and coaches took in the scenery in cities like Munich, Wells, and Venice, with team bonding activities like bike tours and boat rides. This is Elon's second trip to Europe under head coach Matt Matheny. The team went to the same three countries in 2011. Now, Elon did have one minor setback. Junior forward Christian Harrison suffered a broken wrist in the Phoenix first exhibition game, but is expected to make a full recovery before, the Elon, before Elon begins fall camp in late October. And sticking with Elon men's hoops, the Phoenix Colonial Athletic Association conference schedule was released this morning. The, the Elon kicks off CAA play with a two-game homestand beginning with Northeastern on Thursday, December 31st. Game two will be on Sunday, January 2nd against Drexel. The Phoenix has a total of nine conference home games this season. The CAA Conference Championship will be returning to the Royal Farms Arena in Baltimore, Maryland for the second consecutive year. That will be from March 4th through the 7th. Elon reached the quarterfinals last season defeating Towson in the first round before ultimately falling to CAA runner-up William & Mary. When most people think of fall, they think of football and two-a-days, but our Pace Peroso went to a different kind of training camp. Take a look. Two weeks before the start of the school year, this team is preparing. Here we go, same thing. But they're not like a normal preseason camp. Sure, they have early mornings, long practices, sweaty faces, but they also have flying flags and tubas. We have our preseason camp just like the football team has their preseason camp. The Fire of the Carolinas have been practicing in the summer heat with instruments that can weigh more than 20 pounds. But to be in this band, you need more than just the physical strength. You need the talent. We're all looking at my hands to make sure that they're on the beat. And if I start slowing down or speeding up, then everything's just going to become a mess. This year, you can look forward to a ton of new pop songs in the mix of the games, including songs like Shut Up and Dance by Walk the Moon, artists like Pink, and other pop stars. So that's going to be really fun, just kind of get everyone going, get everyone pepped up. It's not all about playing music for this band. I think that we're really key in keeping the school spirit alive. We're the ones out there playing the fight song every game, win, lose, draw. And Loon says that the combo of the marching band, a packed stadium, and tailgating is what brings the campus together. The emotional tie of, oh my gosh, like, you got this, or like, we're gonna win, or we're gonna lose, or whatever. It just, it brings the student body together so much. Paige Peroso, Elon Local News. Thanks, Justin. That's it for Elon Local News. I'm Sky Cowens, and together, Rashad and our Jackie Pascal are honored to be your evening anchors for the 2015-2016 school year. You can find our stories online at elonlocalnews.com or follow us on social media on Twitter and Facebook at elonlocalnews.com. Have a great night, Elon.